Blessings family, this is your brother L. We're back with another discussion so that we can sharpen our mind, sharpen our spirit, get motivated, get encouraged to go out here in this life to get victory, success, and destiny, and also to go out here and get victory, success, and destiny for the life to come. So on the street, they have a saying, right? One thing they say is, what's the move? What's the play? Whenever they say that, they mean, What can I do to better sustain myself? What venue can I get into that would put me and my family in a better position? What what decision, what strategy can I do to get a success, to get an achievement? What's the move? What's the play? You know, it also comes from uh, sports. Whenever there's a uh, situation in a game where the coach has to draw up a play, No matter what sport it is, they got to draw up a play in order to seal this game. In order to hit this buzzer beater, we got to draw up a play. We got to come up with a move. It also has to do with chess. You know, your next five moves is your most important moves. Your next move is your most important move. And you know, this life, it's, it's not a game, but it is a game to be played where we have to make decisions. We have to use strategies. We have to have discernment. We have to have insight. So whenever we are here speaking about what's the move, what's the play, we're looking at the current situation where we are in April of 2021. No matter where you be on this planet, there's a condition and an environment right now that's going on in the world. So you as a set apart man, set apart woman, you as even just a human being trying to get food and shelter and sustain yourself and your family. You have to be asking yourself, what's the move? What's the play? Uh, What do I do next? There's so many changes in society. We're on the cusp of a technological revolution. We're on the cusp of the scriptural, biblical end time events. We're on the cusp of all these things. So what's the move? What's the play? What's the strategy? What do I do next? And that's what I want to speak on today. I want to put some solutions on the table for brothers and sisters. I want to put some ideas on the table for brothers and sisters to give you food for thought so that as you ask yourself where you are in your life right now, where you're asking yourself, what's the move? What's the play? I want to be here to give you some ideas and share with you some scriptures that hopefully will be able to help you make a move, make a play in your life for you and your family and those who are relying on you so that you can have victory, success and destiny. So what's the move? What's the play? Let's begin in the book of Jasher, chapter 14. In the book of Jasher, chapter 14, there was a situation with a brother named Rikayon. The brother's name was Rikayon, and he had fallen on some difficult times. And he had moved to a new area in the area that we now call Egypt, Mizraim. That's where he moved to. And he came there with very little in his hands. And it was at a time in his society where there was a lot of changes going on, a lot of innovations, a lot of things taking place that was out of his control that affected his living situation. So long story short, not going to hold you too long. What the brother did was come up with an innovative idea, a, a resourceful idea, an industrious idea. And that idea that he put into play and the decisions he made was able to lift him up out of his dire situation. Even though the environment around him was changing, it was a lot going on. Similar to how it is today, you have so much going on with the threat of uh, travel being suspended because of uh, vaccine passports. Um, You have a lot going on with uh, the borders of nations. You still have the whole COVID-19 that is looming a little bit. Just like in Rikayon's day, in our day, there's a lot going on. There's uh, a lot of ups and downs in economies. A lot's going on, just like it does in in Rikayon's day. But he came out with a resourceful idea. I'll give you the opportunity to read that for yourself. The plays he made in his life uh, in order to better his situation for him and his family. And he was able to turn his dire situation around. He was able to go from a low place to a high place by being resourceful with the things and opportunities that was available at his hand and at his fingertips. And that's what you and I also need to do today. So whenever we ask ourselves, what's the move? What's the play? I want to present to you five things that 
you can utilize in the here and now if it is at your availability to do so that are opportunities to put you and your family in a better situation uh, physically, spiritually, uh, for self-defense, for uh, procuring your future and for maintaining as we await on the kingdom to come. Because the Messiah did tell us in the parable, do business and occupy until I come. And the five things I want to speak on as far as what's the move, what's the play, what brothers and sisters can do right now, today, and in the next few weeks and months, plays you can make, moves you can make to better your situation. Uh, one of the ones I want to speak on is cryptocurrency. Another one I want to speak on is land. Another one I want to speak on is gold. Another one I want to speak on is guns. And the last one I want to speak on is passports. So cryptocurrency, land, gold, guns, and passports. Let's say that again, because I want to give you the opportunity to do your research on this as well. Cryptocurrency, land, gold, guns, and finally, passports. So what's the move? What's the play? Well, let's start with cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency is booming right now. And I know many of you, especially those of you in the Hebrew community, you've heard Hebrews speak negatively about it. You have a lot of Hebrews saying it's the mark of the beast. And uh, you have a lot of Hebrews saying uh, don't deal with the cryptocurrency. Uh, it's, it's the digital chip. It's 666. We hear a lot of that rhetoric. And here's the thing about it, family. Even if cryptocurrency later on becomes the digital mark and the digital chip, it's not evil to invest in it right now. There's nothing evil or breaking Torah about going on Coinbase, going on KuCoin, going on Exodus, going on Cash App to purchase some Bitcoin, moving it to a wallet or purchase any other type of cryptocurrency and invest it and then wait to see what that investment will turn into. And here's the thing to understand about cryptocurrency. It's not just Bitcoin. There's hundreds of other tokens. For brothers and sisters that missed the Bitcoin boat, and even it's still not too late to get in that, there's so many other altcoins that are only a fraction of a penny. Don't let somebody make you think you got to put $10,000 on a cryptocurrency to make any significant amount of money. There's something now called DeFi, D-E hyphen Fi, and NFTs, non-fungible tokens. Some of them family are right now worth fractions of a penny. So there's some, nobody's telling nobody to put their life savings on no cryptocurrency or anything like that because there's good to it, but there's also risk. It's not a, uh, a get rich quick scheme or anything like that. Uh, there's coins that, People have invested in last year that are just now yielding them results. And there's coins that are worth fractions of a penny that you can put ten dollars down on it. And in a couple months, if that coin begins to gain value and the stock rises, that ten dollars can turn into a hundred. So you don't have to invest in a lot of the more expensive ones if you don't choose to. And right now, cryptocurrency is booming. That is definitely a move and definitely a play for brothers and sisters to make uh, that will help further themselves in these times. Once again, always do your research before making uh, any decisions on anything financial. Uh, always do your due diligence to find out about these tokens and uh, what are their what are their benefits? What is the long term um, payout for some of these coins? Do your research on that. Uh, a coin that I'm heavily invested in right now is Dogecoin. Another one is Ripple, XRP. Uh, these are some of the coins that I've seen, you know, great results in. So once again, just giving you brothers and sisters ideas and food for thought. All right. Like I said, the Hebrews, uh, many in the Hebrew community have been speaking against it. But think about it like this. Even if it does become the digital mark, it's not that right now. It that's like saying somebody that you knew growing up, they was a good dude when you knew him, even though they later became a stone cold killer. But when you knew him in high school, they was cool. Like they always did right by you uh, at that time. Now, they may have became a stone cold killer later, 
But for the time you knew them, they was good. Same thing with this cryptocurrency. There's brothers and sisters out here that have been able to lift them and their families out of poverty by cryptocurrency investments they made back in 2013 when Bitcoin was just a dollar. When Bitcoin was just a dollar, they bought about a hundred dollars worth of it. Then when the price went to 60,000, now they sitting on a couple million just for a hundred dollar investment they made eight years ago. And that's the boom that we're seeing in cryptocurrency right now, where just as Bitcoin saw the surge over the years, some of these other smaller, more unknown coins are going to become the next Bitcoins and surge in the weeks, months, years to come. So again, it's not evil to invest in it right now. It's neutral. It's something that's neutral. All right. Even water can be used for evil if you try to drown somebody. There's many things that are neutral. A car is neutral. But in it, whenever you start running people over with the car and murdering people with the vehicle, then it's, it's something bad. It's how you utilize what's in your hand. So cryptocurrency inherently is not evil. It's something that's neutral that can be leveraged as an investment that can give you streams of income that you can then leverage in other areas. That's all it is. Family is leverage. And those of you who know my ministry, you know, over and over again, I always warn brothers and sisters, you have to be careful with some of the advice you take from the Hebrew community as it pertains to you being taught about your true Hebrew identity, as it pertains to being taught about the laws and commands, they on point about that. But when it comes to the Hebrew community, you don't really want to take much financial advice from the Hebrew community. Because on a grand overall scale, from from my many years in this walk, not many of them can really display to you uh, great success in the area of investing and things like that. So once again, be careful who you're getting wisdom and advice from. Even double check the wisdom and advice I'm sharing with you. Do your own research about cryptocurrencies. Do your own research about these coins. I can only tell you from my personal experience, Bitcoin has done right by me. Dogecoin, which I'm invested in, and XRP Ripple have done right by me. Even right now as we speak, Dogecoin is surging right now. It's surging major. It's up almost like 14%. Earlier today, it was up like 20 percent. So cryptocurrency is a great stream of income. If brothers and sisters have, you know, a little extra income that they want to toss at it. Like I said, you don't got to throw 50 K or 50,000 at it unless you got it like that. Even then, I would be cautious about putting that much up on it. Um, even if you got an extra 50 dollars to put on a, a altcoin, a altcoin that's worth like one penny. You put 50 dollars on it, you can get almost 500 coins. And later on, if a year later or six months later, that coin that was once one penny becomes worth fifty dollars, then your fifty dollar investment has now more than doubled. It's quadrupled so many times over. And then you can take those profits from the cryptocurrency and use it towards kingdom work, use it towards feeding the homeless, use it towards uh, helping out the orphan, the widow and the fatherless, use it towards ministry travel, use it towards ministering to the needs of the saints, use it towards putting you and your family in a better position. So cryptocurrency is a booming market right now that brothers and sisters can leverage to make investments that can then yield a return for them. But be wise as you go into it. Take a look at DeFi, DE hyphen FI. Take a look at NFTs, non-fungible tokens. Take a look at some of these altcoins that's worth fractions of a penny and a penny. Take a look at some of these cryptocurrency platforms like Coinbase. Uh, take a look at some of these apps like uh, uh, the Genesis app, uh, CryptoCoin app, KuCoin, uh, Exodus Wallet. Take a look at some of these cold storage wallets where you can store your cryptocurrency because Whenever the economies of the nations fall, the money will be digital. Whenever the economies of all these nations fall, the money will be digital. All right. So think about diversifying your income. It's wise in these days where you have people getting their accounts frozen for telling the truth, bank accounts getting frozen and things like that. So it's wise to have your assets spread out in different places. It's wise to diversify your portfolio. So nothing wrong with having a little bit of uh, funds in stocks, little bit of funds in cryptocurrency, little bit of funds in the bank 
to spread out your funds. So if there's an EMP attack and, you know, all the cryptocurrency is wiped out, you still have some tangible assets in land or gold. Uh, if the if the dollar collapses to, to zero and it's worth nothing no more, then you still have some of these cryptocurrencies that can be uh, translated to other uh, global currencies. It's all about diversity. It's all about strategy. It's all about always having a move and a play and being steps ahead of the adversary. All right. So cryptocurrency is a play and a move for brothers to make and sisters to make in these times to make investments that could uh, multiply back to them. Uh, another play right now, land, land for the brothers and sisters who may not want to deal with the cryptocurrency thing or for brothers and sisters who have seen nice profits in cryptocurrency, who have then went to purchase land. After that, land right now is booming. Uh, even uh, Bill Gates over there buying up a bunch of land. So even the wicked understand the power of land. So how much more the righteous? So in these times, it's very important because we don't know when uh, the next wars will take place. Uh, we don't know when the next economic collapses will take place. We don't know these things. So it's very important to have land set aside that you and your family and uh, those attached to your ministry will be able to go to, to be on the land, to have your own food, to have your own, to be amongst your own. Because when all hell breaks loose in the streets and in the cities, you want to be able to go to a safe haven on some land. Now, that's not to say that land will be the salvation. All these things I'm speaking of today, family, none of them will be our ultimate salvation. Only repenting, being baptized, keeping the commands and enduring to the end and righteousness will be our salvation. None of these things I'm speaking on will profit in the day of wrath or in the, that, that last day. All right. I want to make that clear for the super Hebrews out there. That will, cry, that will try to say, oh, man, this is carnal. You know, ain't none of this stuff going to save us. Negro, I'm, I'm not saying none of it will be our salvation. I'm saying these are plays and moves to make in these times while we're waiting on the kingdom to be set up, while we're waiting on the Messiah to return. So land is a good move and a good play for brothers and sisters at this time. Even if it comes to a point where brothers and sisters need to pool their income and resources, I talk about this all the time, how much the Gentiles have done this, where there's multiple families of them living in one home or on one land. You can have five or six different families living in one home or on one land, and they're all pooling their income. Everybody has streams of income in the household and is paying for the land or paying for the home. So it's coming together as groups, families or brothers and sisters of like mind. If some of your natural family is not on board with some of these things, just other brothers and sisters of like mind, y'all getting a home together, y'all getting land together and pooling your resources because it's a lot easier for four or five families in one home or on one land pooling their resources to get the bills paid, to provide, to have that that tribal uh, unified stance than it is for one single man or one single woman you know, barely making ends meet, working their fingers to the bone and still coming up with nothing after all the bills is paid just to be in a, a, a place that somebody can kick you out of. But when it's your own land, it's more security. It's more safety in that. And it's also more opportunities to grow food on that land. It's more uh, able to defend yourself when you have uh, five, six, seven, eight brothers and sisters ready to guard the land with firearms and protect the land that puts you more at a place of not being vulnerable than uh, maybe a single woman would be or just a brother by himself. Having that tribal pack unity on one land, that is an asset in these days. So a move and a play for brothers to make is land. And if it's not land, then community homes, uh, homes where you got multiple people names on the on the lease, on the mortgage, whatever. And all of y'all are paying on it and y'all are living together as one unit, pooling your income. That's something that people are doing right now. So land, whether it's you owning land or real estate, people getting commercial properties, people getting uh, private properties, whatever the case may be. Land is a play and a move right now 
for brothers and sisters to get streams of income and ways to uh, advance themselves and their families while we wait on the kingdom to come. So cryptocurrency, land, and of course, gold. We've spoken about this before, about the value of gold. And yes, I know some of those super Hebrews are going to come along and be like, hey, brother L, the scripture says that in those days they will toss their gold in the street as worthless. I know it says that Negro, but guess what? That day has not come yet. Right now, gold is still popping. That's almost like somebody saying, hey, uh, we're wearing clothes ain't going to do us no good because, you know, one day we're going to die. So, you know, clothes don't matter. OK, walk around naked if you want to and you're going to get locked up for indecent exposure. So just because one day our bodies are going to die and clothes don't mean nothing, don't mean we don't have to wear clothes now. Once again, that's that nigga, small, narrow minded thinking people have about just because the scripture says one day something will be worthless, that it can't be leveraged now. Gold is something that can still be leveraged now. And some of these precious metals, it will also be used as a good bartering tool in those times and not just gold, but other commodities like the next one I'm going to get into, like the guns. But other commodities, the golds, the silvers, things like that are still tradable assets. They can be traded all over the world, whether you in America, South America, uh, Canada, uh, Africa, Australia, wherever you're at, gold is valuable. So it can be used as a bartering system, even if there's no gold, even uh, I mean, even even if there's no cryptocurrency, even if there's no land. There will be people that will want gold. So it's also a bartering tool. So it's wise in these times to leverage these multiple uh, ways of resources, cryptocurrency, land, gold. And of course, the next one we go into guns, weapons. Even if you're a person who don't want to get into cryptocurrency, don't want to get into land, don't want to get into gold, you definitely better have a sword. Even if you don't hear me on none of the other stuff, you definitely want to have a sword and weaponry. And yes, for the super Hebrews, I know the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Yeah, I know he who lives by the sword dies by the sword. I already know all the scriptures y'all going to throw. But understand this. Reciting those scriptures won't help if a sex trafficker is trying to come snatch your daughter or your son right in front of you because they think you soft and don't got no weapon. OK, so we need spiritual weapons as well as physical weapons. And in the days to come, some of these guns, some of these bullets will also be a bartering tool because with this present administration that's in, they're doing their damn best to limit the amount of weapons that can be purchased or owned. This uh, administration that's in the presidency right now is doing their damn best to put a lock on uh, high caliber assault weapons and things of that nature. So understand the day will come where people, the, the citizens owning their own weapons will be looked at as illegal. So now is the time for you to get weapons. All right. Now is the time if you've not done it before. Some of you, I know I'm preaching to the choir. You over there armed to the teeth. You got ammo stacked up to the ceiling. You good. Hallelujah. I'm glad you listen. But there's others that still need to wake up to that. So arm yourselves, arm yourselves. And this is a time where there are still resources flowing around. They passed the bill to extend unemployment benefits all the way to September. So there's resources being passed around. We live at a time where it's the easiest as ever to start an online business. Resources are being passed around. There's a lot of opportunities out here. If you get your mind and your head out of this Hebrew community box, where they're telling you you're cursed in, in, in captivity and Deuteronomy says uh, you're just supposed to be broke and uh, out here bad with the refrigerator empty and your kids not eating until a UFO comes to pick you up. Get your head out of that Hebrew community box and learn of the times that you live in. Learn of all the opportunities at your fingertips. Learn of all the great things that can come to you by leveraging business credit, personal credit. Yeah, one day the American system will crash. Nigga, I know. Y'all remind us all the time. But for now, credit still matters to an extent. For now, having a flow of assets and cash flow still matters. Now, a lot of these things still matter because you still have to feed and shelter yourself and your family. Okay? This should be common damn sense. 
people, for a lot of Negroes in the Hebrew community, they think you speak in Swahili when you talk about providing for your household and providing for the saints. It's remarkable, ain't it? But not to go off on a tangent, guns, weapons, whatever you can get. There may be some of you, um, you have that mentality. You don't want to deal with the firearms. Okay. Take your behind and get a bow and arrow. Take your behind and get an actual sword or some daggers. Get some form of weaponry to protect yourself and your family. Because guess what? The sex trafficking and human trafficking is only going to get worse. Guess what? As times get harder for the world, people are going to get even more desperate. Like it talks about in second Ezra chapter 16, where they will have no mercy on their neighbor and run in there and try to take what the next man has. These are going to be the people who didn't prepare. These are going to be the people who are not taking the wisdom and advice like what I'm sharing today and what others are sharing ways to prepare. These are going to be the ones trying to break in your house, kidnap your daughter, your son, because they ass didn't make the decisions to position they self and they family when they had the opportunity to. So whenever they come, because trust me, they will come when times get real out here. You need to already be prepared to have trustworthy brothers and sisters around you that's armed spiritually and naturally. Because guess what? Even with us having the weapons and the ammunition, there's going to come a time where ammo will run out. Sometimes guns jam. OK, even swords get rust on them. So there comes a time where we're going to have to have that two witnesses type of spiritual weaponry. We're going to have to have that type of weaponry where we can make uh, warlocks and enemies drop dead just by us speaking the word. We have to have double power, spiritual and natural. We have to be the type of people that have that accurate marksmanship with the weapons and the guns and also have accurate spiritual marksmanship where we can make sorcerers and witches drop dead by speaking a curse on them. So we have to be armed to the teeth. We got to be armed to the teeth, feet and nuts. With spiritual weapons and natural weapons. So that's what the move is. That's what the play is. If you don't listen to nothing else I said in this discussion, make sure that you are armed spiritually and naturally with weapons. And finally, passports. Passports. What's the move? What's the play? I'm going to tell you what's the move and what's the play. Get your passports. If you haven't already, get your passports before they start passing laws about you having to, uh, to get that jab. And you know what I'm talking about. We got to be wise and don't let the left hand know what the right hand is doing because people channels is getting snatched down for mentioning too much about that jab or that needle shot. You know what I'm talking about. So before they pass all these draconian laws about not being able to travel unless you have the jab, go ahead and already get your passport now. Another thing you want to do is get your IDP. That's called an international driver's permit. That gives you the ability to drive on other grids. Whenever you go to other countries, you'll be able to legally drive there with the international driver's permit. It's as easy as going to AAA. Go to AAA website um, and for like $25, you can get the IDP, the international driver's permit. Get that, send them in your picture, get your IDP so you can travel to other places and legally drive there. It's like an international driver's license is what it is. Also, what you want to do in these times, what's the move, what's the play for travel? You want to start taking a look at these countries that allow what's called digital nomad visas, digital nomad visas. These are countries that um, if you can show them that you are an entrepreneur and that your business can bring revenue and taxable income to their country, they will give you a six month or one year visa to be able to live and operate and have homes and land in their country on the digital nomad visa. Even in the times of the COVID, they, they have this opportunity. This is very key for all you uh, entrepreneurs out there that have mobile businesses, online businesses where you can set up shop and have a business anywhere. You can go to another country and run your business. Take a look at digital nomad visas. This gives you the ability to move around and not just be in one place, in one nation. That's the importance of living in these times to travel, to be able to go to other grids. There are some brothers and sisters. Uh, I know a brother that's in Mexico. He has him and his family have dual citizenship, Mexico and the USA. So they travel back and forth the border freely. And that's very important in these times. As we stay spirit led, you never know when the Holy Spirit will give you that unction, 
Just like the Holy Spirit gave unction to the disciples and apostles and told them, yo, uh, move to this area, move to that area. Remember our forefather Abraham, the most High told him, yo, get up and move. So father Abraham had an ancient version of a passport, meaning he was not stuck to one area. In these times, we got to be willing to be mobile. And here's the thing for brothers and sisters that may not have a passport yet. Get that uh, for those who feel like, look, brother L, I'm not into all that traveling, going to other places. Well, here's the move in the play for you. One good thing that's food for thought that you can do is the area that you live in. Get your hands on one of those old school maps. I'm not talking about the GPS map and Google, Google Earth and all that. No, those old school maps, those physical layout maps that show you where all the railroads, lakes, rivers and all that is in your city and in your state. Get one of those maps and study your location and know where the railroads are, where the lakes, where the rivers are. And if it, if it is in your ability, get you a side by side or a motorbike, something to where you can drive it on those off roads. Because in the event of a war or a catastrophe or an EMP strike, any of these inevitable events, you want to be able to know your area. If you have to get up and go, you want to be able to know those back roads, back country roads. You want to know the railroad tracks you can follow or the, uh, the rabbit trails out in the wilderness to be able to escape because it'll be chaos on the highways. It'll be chaos in the large population centers. So for those who don't want to get into the passport thing and all that, at least know the layout of the land where you are. Know the physical map of where you are. Also, another good thing to do is to have a burner vehicle. What do I mean by that? A burner vehicle. You know, one of those 98s or 99s that doesn't have any of the Internet GPS equipping in it. It's good to have a burner vehicle. So in the time, if you need to travel to not be tracked, you want to be in a vehicle that doesn't have all that Internet uh, digital location uh, technology in it. You want to have one of those 96s, 97s, a burner vehicle. All right. It's very important in these times to be able to know how to go on and off grid at your will. You want to be able to not be easily tracked if that is at all possible. Now, we know at the end of the day, no matter how much we plan, how much we do, our fate is in the hands of the most high. But some of these things I'm laying out, they are logical, practical things that you can do in your everyday life. These are plays, moves and strategies you can make just like the brother Rakeon did in Joshua 14 to position you and your family better. So if you have a burner vehicle that cannot be trapped with all the Internet uh, navigation stuff, that's good. So you can make a move or get you a side by side or a motorbike to be able to hit some of those off grid roads if you need to when the time comes. Also, in these times, it's good to have a burner phone. All right. It's good to have a phone like one of those old school flip phones. That doesn't have all this Internet stuff in it. You need one of those. Even if it's just an extra phone line for business, you want to have a burner phone. All right. That's not in your name or can't be tracked back to you. You want to be able to move uh, under the cloak of anonymity when that time comes. Now, these are all things I'm presenting, family, the cryptocurrency, the land, the gold, the guns and the passports. These are all solutions I'm presenting that you can look into that will help you have more options, more streams of income in these times so that you have a move, so that you have a play to better your situation as we await on the kingdom to come. Because look, a lot of people have been making a lot of prophecies and predictions that have not come to pass. I know they're still telling you uh, planet hell is coming next week. The world's going to end next week. Things of that nature. We do know all the father's prophecies will come to pass, but that's the key. The father's prophecies are going to come to pass. Not a lot of these niggas on the internet though. I'll follow the most high's prophecies and his prophets, but be careful about feeding into all these doom and gloom predictions. The same niggas telling you not to invest in cryptocurrency. Those same niggas are broke and can't hold down jobs. Do you want to listen to their advice or the brother or sister out here that has made hundreds of thousands of cryptocurrency and stocks and is using that to feed their people and teach their people how to better their lives? Which one you want to listen to? Keep those things in mind. Use wisdom. OK, 
The same niggas uh, telling you about all these predictions, they the same ones that said stuff like uh, Trump was going to uh, go back in office on March the 5th and, you know, um, 2019, we was all going to go back to the wilderness. All these prophecies and predictions that have not come to pass and people let years and years of their lives go without seizing some of these great opportunities around them in the times they live in because they was listening to niggas that didn't know what the hell they was talking about. Don't let that be you. So research some of these things I brought forth today and then seek the most high in prayer about uh, moves you should make in your life. Because once again, we're not telling nobody what to do. All these are our suggestions of things that I've seen work in my life and in the lives of others to give you food for thought, to give you a move, a play, a strategy to make out here so you don't be lost and behind the times and wake up when it's too late. I want you to be ahead in the chess game, not behind. I want you to have the blessings of Deuteronomy 28, not the curses. So on that note, family, I'm going to say shalom. Remember, repent, be baptized, keep the commands, love the most high with all your strength, mind, soul, will, and might, endure to the end. Shalom.